This video introduces aviation and geography. Geography is the science that study the Earth. Within the Earth, you can study the different territories, you can study population. So we can say that is the science that combines the study of humans and territories. Now, when we talk about aviation geography, what we try to study are the different stakeholders, ATM, airlines, airports, and so on, that compose the aviation industry. Let's start to look at one by one. But before going into one by one, let me show you this airport map, which collects all of the stakeholders. Passengers arriving and departing to the airport to take the airlines, which uses all those planes that have been produced by the aircraft manufacturers. At the airport, those uh, airlines make some alliances, so they collaborate uh, between them. And when departing and arriving, they are being controlled by the air traffic controllers of the ATM. An airport is a place I use to change transportation modes, but it can also be used to change flights. And those airports connecting passengers are called hub airports. Let me give you an example. If I want to travel from China, Beijing, to Madrid, I could travel direct or I could use another airport. Let's say I use Istanbul in Turkey. So first I fly from Beijing to Istanbul and then from Istanbul to Madrid. So this Istanbul airport is acting as a hub in that case. Non-hub airports are the ones which only have point-to-point -point traffic. They don't change uh, passengers' planes uh, at the airport. If I go to my home country, Spain, and you go in the north of Spain, there is a, a place called Asturias. It's a small airport which they have flights in and out, but there are not uh, people changing flights at that airport. So this airport is considered a non-hub airport. Other classification for airport are primary airports and secondary airports. Primary airports are the main airports of a city, that be a small city or a big city, and secondary is the second one. In some cases, when one city has a single airport, it's the primary airport, but airlines wants to find an alternative way to fly, they go outside of the airport, of the city, sorry, and they go to a secondary airport, which might be another city. These secondary airports are normally airports farther away from the city center. They, are, uh, they have less luxury on the airport. So very often are used by low-cost carriers as a way to provide a lower cost for them and lower tickets. Another stakeholder of the aviation industry are aircraft manufacturers. They are the ones making the planes, designing, manufacturing, and so on. If we look at commercial aircraft, we can divide it among three main groups, which are regional, narrow body, and wide body. Basically, regional are planes of, roughly speaking, less than 100 seats, narrow body, something between 100 and 200, and wide body more than 200. One way to distinguish narrow body of wide body is that wide body normally will have more than one aisle, normally two aisles between the different seats, whether narrow body will have uh, one single aisle. aisle. We have different manufacturers around the world, but if we start with wide body, like the big aircraft, we have only two which are Airbus and Boeing, are the only two companies worldwide uh, producing wide-body aircraft. Almost same for narrow body, which again are Airbus and Boeing, but there is one new one, a Russian, Sukhoi, who is producing a, a narrow-body aircraft. 
when we look at regionals, we have uh, Bombardier, we have Embraer in Brazil, we have Comac in China producing regional aircraft. So as we can see, there are just few of them because there is a very, very complex and sophisticated business. So there is not easy to start a, a plane company. Those planes are used by the airlines. And in the case of the picture, we are talking about Airbus 380, which is operated by the airline Qantas from Australia. The different types of airlines that we have, we can summarize in mainly three. Full service carriers, low cost carriers, and regional carriers. Let me introduce more in detail the first one, full service and low cost. So the main differences of full service carrier versus low cost carriers are the following. If we look at airports, full service carriers tend to use hub airports, whether low cost carriers most of the times use secondary airports. From the alliance point of view, full service carriers tend to be, uh, belong to one of the alliances, but low cost carriers tend to be independent. If we look at the aircraft types they use, full service carriers tend to have different types of aircraft at different size, wide body, narrow body, whether low cost tend to have single aircraft type in order to optimize the cost, to have the lowest cost available. And two examples could be as a full service carriers in Turkey, uh, we have Turkish Airlines and as a low cost carrier, we have Pegasus Airlines. Another very important stakeholder of the aviation industry are the passengers. Those people that want to travel from A to B. If we look at why they travel, what it can be called a travel purpose, we differentiate between two types. We have business passengers and leisure passengers. And that will have an important influence when we define the product of an airline for one type of the other. If we look at destinations, then we have domestic passengers and international passengers. Again, here, if we look at the airport, it's not gonna be the same setup for domestic passengers versus international passengers, that they need more checks for the visa, passport, and so on. Another important element of aviation is the air traffic control, also called ATM, which stands for Air Traffic Management. It's a service to, the, to guide the aircraft from the ground, mainly to avoid collisions among aircraft. The different types are one, ground control, to guide the plane on the airport uh, ground. Second, local control, which means mainly the takeoff and landing phases of the plane, of the flight. Third approach, which means when airplanes are getting close to the airport we, uh, when flying. And fourth, route control, when the uh, aircraft is flying from A to B and is at the flight level. The last stakeholder I want to introduce you is airline alliances. What is an alliance? Basically, it's a cooperation between two or more airlines. And this cooperation is mostly for commercial purposes. One way I have to see those cooperations are when I go to the airport and I fly to certain destinations in which for one uh, destination I get different flight numbers. Or all those different flight numbers belong to the different companies that they are cooperating. And that's called code share. The main alliances around the world are three. We have the Star Alliances, where we have airlines such as Turkish Airlines or Lufthansa belong to the alliance. We have a Sky Team, where we have, for instance, Air France 
OK LEM. And we have one word when we have, for instance, American Airlines, British Airways, or Finnair. Summary. We said we had airports, which can be hub of non-hub. We have aircraft manufacturers, Airbus, Boeing, Bombardier, Embraer, Sukhoi, and Comac, which they produce different type of uh, aircraft, wide body, narrow body, and regional. We have the airlines, which we saw there are two main categories, full service carriers and low cost carriers, such as Pegasus in Turkey. We have the ATM, making sure that we avoid collisions, and we saw the different types. And we have cooperation between airlines in different alliances, and we saw the three of them, Star Alliance, Sky Team, and One World. And not forget the passengers, which we had business and leisure, depending on the reason for travel, as well as depending on the destination, domestic and international. Thank you.